In this gross domestic revenue, 3.1% during January, March this year. It could get worse as restrictions and lockdowns continue to constrain people's movement, severely hurting economic activity. The nationwide lockdown kicked in from March 24, and its actual impact on the economy will actually show up in subsequent months when businesses reach to a standstill. COVID-19 induced disruptions appear to have devastated the broader economy, pummeled by collapsing household spending and shuttered businesses that are battling to stay afloat. India is now staring at the real possibility of slipping into a full-blown recession. This is probably going to be the first time in 41 years that India actually falls into a, what is called a technical recession. So what is a recession? An economic is described to be in a recession when it contracts, when actually real GDP contracts in two successive quarters. That is, GDP gets into a negative, GDP growth gets into a negative territory or falls successively in two, three-month periods. India's GDP grew 4.1% in October-December 2019 and 5.7% in 2018-19. Uh, gross value added is, a, is an important piece of metric. And let's get into some details of the GDP data or the national income data that the government has put out. Uh, the Central Statistics Office that puts out this data has, has shown that the gross value added grew 3% in January-March 2020 compared to 3.5% in the previous quarter and 5.6% in the same quarter of FY20. Now, what is GBA? GBA is GDP minus taxes. And that is the reason it's seen as a more realistic gauge to measure economic activity. So with GBA actually lower than GDP, GBA growth lower than GDP growth means implies that the deceleration is probably sharper than what the headline GDP growth number suggests. The manufacturing sector grew minus 1.4%, that is contracted 1.4% in January, March 2020, from a growth of 2.1% in the same quarter last year and a contraction of 0.8% in October, December. Factory output measured by the Index of Industrial Production, IIP, which is the broadest approximation to measure economic or business activity in India, contracted 16% in March 2020. This shows declining momentum of both investment and consumption. Even core industry production of steel, electricity, cement, etc., actually are in the negative territory or have been stagnant in recent quarters. In fact, a, a piece of data that just came out before the GDP data was released uh, showed that core sector uh, which accounts for about 40% of India's factory output, actually fell 38.1% in the month of April. It contracted 38.1% in the month of April. That is an, indeed a very alarming and worrying sign. But that's it. You would not expect with factories shut, with companies, uh, with offices shut because of a very stringent lockdown, which was enforced very, very strictly across the country by all state governments and the center, uh, you would not expect uh, steel production and coal production, cement production to actually rise rapidly or grow rapidly. Likewise, with, with factories shut and industries shut and you know, uh, companies not really operating, offices being shut, electricity production would, would always contract. It would not rise when there is no demand for electricity. The silver lining, however, is the agricultural sector has turned out to be severe. The agricultural sector, which accounts for about 14% of GDP, but supports more than half of India's population, grew 5.9% during the fourth quarter of FY20, that is during January and March, compared to 1.6% in the same quarter last year and 3.6% in the previous quarter. Uh, well, but that said, economic activity in sectors such as retail trade, hotels and restaurants and aviation, as well as in the unorganized sector, and as we all know this, have also been hit hard, massively hard by the lockdown. Construction activity indicators have also slackened. In fact, construction sector gross value added contracted 2.2% in January, March, compared to 6% growth in the same quarter last year and a contraction of 0.04% in October, December 2019. So when we look back at, uh, well, in nine, about nine months or 12 months from now, when we look back at, at, at the January, March quarter of 2020, uh, the good thing is that probably we'll look back at this quarter with a degree of longing, because it is almost certain that this quarter, that is, April to June, 
GDP is going to contract. There is no way you can expect GDP to grow when April and uh, uh, whole of April and mo most part of May has been under a lockdown and uh, and its uh, uh, economic activity is only going to resume very very gradually uh, across the country. Uh, likewise, uh, this contraction probably will uh, spread to uh, the subsequent uh, next three months as well, from July to September. Uh, so technically, we could be a recession. We could be in a recession because if GDP contracts from in the in, in the in the two quarters starting uh, from April until September, uh, we will probably be in a recession. The first a recession, first time since uh, 1979. Uh, but that said, uh, the key question here is not that we are slipping into a recession. That is almost foregone. The key question is when does this slide stop? Nobody knows the answer yet. The government does not know. The medical uh, fraternity across the world doesn't know. Economies across the world have been battered by this pandemic because countries after countries have enforced lockdowns just to spread the contain, just to contain the spread of this this virus. Uh, but if if at some point in time when when the economics show starts uh, show signs of reviving and their green shoots probably sometime in the last quarter of, uh, of this calendar year, that is sometime between October and December, and uh, and uh, you see some activity returning. Then probably the government, policymakers, economists, analysts across the world, and in, indeed in India, would think that January to March quarter of, of India's GDP growth in January to March in 2020 uh, is something that everybody probably will be longing for. Let's all hope for the best. But as of now, the signs are extremely alarming.